You're not listening, and they're not listening, so why should I continue this charade? A man spends half his life learning how to mouth the masters, and 90% of the audience is worrying about whether or not they left their headlights on or thinking about their next meal. Verily, it is enough to drive an honest actor to drink. What's that? You say you are listening. Well, of course. A grown man goes berserk before your very eyes. That's something to pay, to pay attention to. But what about the other times, hmm? The times when listening is more difficult and the speaker is not quite so charming or witty or humble. Are you a good listener when the chips are down? Or are you like most other people? I under no circumstances listen to nobody when it comes to religion or politics. Or doctors. Yeah, I'm a pretty good listener, as long as it's not some boring lecture or something. I'm not as good a listener as I'd like to be. Sometimes I'm distracted or my mind wanders. I guess I'm like a lot of other people. Most of us, if we were honest, would admit that we're not very good listeners. Why? Why aren't more of us better at listening? The reason, gentle listeners, is that listening is a skill. A difficult skill, and one that so few of us have learned well. Ah! Huh? <laughs> listening, like all other skills, takes practice. It's much like fencing. Ah! 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 You know I'm a master. And like fencing, if you haven't practiced enough... The results can be disastrous. I told him I was a master. He wasn't listening. Thank you very much. You all are too, too kind. You know, being here today reminds me of a story which happened many years ago when I was just a, a fledgling actor. It happened when I was playing Henry V somewhere in the provinces of England in a small provincial theater. That finger shouldn't hurt that way. That's just a little cut in there. No, I didn't bring another Band-Aid. That's a strange earring. Alice would never wear anything like that. Not if I gave it to her. You! Me? You have just committed one of the fundamental sins of bad listening. You have let your eyes lead your mind into the pastures of distraction. Now look, let me give you a hint. Excuse me. If you want to hear what someone is saying, look them in the eye. Eye contact. It's one of the best techniques to train yourself to be a good listener. Sure, I know it's simple. The trick is to do it all the time. The world is full of diversions. To shut distractions out takes constant effort. It requires discipline and hard work. But if you persist against distractions, they will be gone. Now, once you've got your eyes under control, you can go on to the next listening skill. Control of the mind. This is a training center at a large military base. I want to use it to illustrate what can happen to listening when you don't keep your mind under control. Now, for this demonstration, we'll require two things. A talker, and a listener. The talker is speaking at the normal adult rate of about 125 words per minute. But what about the listener? She has a thinking speed that's maybe ten times faster than his talking speed. And this ability, which could be a tremendous asset to listening, is often its worst enemy. Listen. With this instrument, we can hear the thoughts of Alice while she listens to the sergeant's instructions. So this machine has a lot in common. A lot in common. Of course it has a lot in common. Everything has a lot in common with everything else. With a few exceptions. A few exceptions. That's as bad as a lot in common. Everything has a few exceptions. I wonder how many times the sergeant's given these instructions. She's in trouble. You're in trouble. What do you mean? You just said I can think ten times faster than he can talk. 
I've listened to everything you've said. I beg to differ. You were so lost in your own irrelevant thoughts that you missed a very important point. I did? You did. Because this was the next statement your wandering mind was going to let you hear. But if you forget to do that, you just might find your teeth spread around the room. My teeth? He does have a graphic way of putting things, doesn't he? Well, Alice, because you're a likable sort of person and have a nice set of teeth, I'm going to give you another chance to use your thinking speed wisely. Are you ready to try again from the beginning? I'll try my best. That's the spirit. So this machine has a lot in common with the other machines. Now, Alice, use this time to ask yourself questions about what he's saying and see how it compares with what you already know. With a few exceptions. For example... Exceptions? The power switch is probably down on the left on this model. I've got to remember to ask about the safety brake. It's usually right near the power switch. Now, with this machine, before you turn it on, you've got to make sure that it's out of gear. I'd better remember that. That's good. Keep it up. And if you forget to do that, you just might find your teeth spread around the room. There you go, Alice. Now you're using your thinking speed wisely. You see, listening is such a common activity that most people take it for granted. They don't think of it as something they can get better at with practice. But if they only knew, if only they could learn to keep their eyes from distraction, their minds from abusing the power of thinking speed, their mouths... Oh, their mouths. Listen, you wouldn't believe what the guys in my division get away with. The absentee rate is absolutely incredible. And when I tell them it's getting out of hand... This is Arnold. Don't hear me. Of all the things in the world that there are to hear, hear his favorite is his you? own voice. Now, I've been at this job now for eight years, and I think I know how to handle you people. Arnold is at present holding forth at the weekly labor management meeting of his company. But the most unbelievable thing of all is when I tell them how to do something, they stand around like a bunch of dummies. Now, how can I meet a production quota with a bunch like that? Arnold! What? Arnold, you have a problem with your mouth. My mouth? Yes, Arnold, your mouth. Bad breath? No, Arnold. Your problem is you talk too much. Your incessant babble not only bores everyone to tears, but it keeps you from hearing what others would tell you if they only had a chance. But I wasn't trying Quiet, to... Quiet, Arnold. I want to show you something. Arnold, I'm going to give you a hint. If you want to be a good listener, you've got to keep your mouth under control. And the way to do that is to think of yourself as an observer. An observer? Imagine that you're collecting information about this meeting for someone else. As an observer, you might learn something. For instance, did you know that Sarah has an excellent idea about how to control absenteeism? But Sarah doesn't know what she's talking about. Arnold, an observer listens, then evaluates. How can you possibly know whether or not her ideas have any value until you hear them? Frank here is shy. He doesn't say much. But he's a good listener. If you'd let him, he'd tell you what he's learned about production quotas and how to get your people to meet them. But Frank doesn't... Ah, Arnold, wouldst that you could realize that your mouth is your own worst enemy. It is physiologically impossible to listen and talk at the same time. Observe. You might learn something useful. Now, Arnold, I'm going to return you to your meeting. Try and remember, be an observer. May I have your rope, please? Thank you. So, let's see what we've got. Thus far, we've identified three important listening skills. Maintaining eye contact with the speaker. Using your thinking speed wisely. And learning to control your mouth by being an observer. So that's it. Three little rules to master and you become a great listener, right? Oh, would that it were so. Friends, Romans, countrymen. Stop. That is not Shakespeare. Now, either do it right or don't do it at all. A director I once had the misfortune to work under. A man of intelligence, wit, and taste. 
but he suffered from one of the most serious forms of bad listening. The closed mind. But I thought if we could just try something a little more inventive... It... Look, there is one way and only one way to do this scene. Sad, isn't it? The exact opposite of creativity. You see, for some people, there are certain subjects like politics or religion or even Shakespeare, which they simply will not discuss. That is a closed mind, and it is a very sorry condition indeed. Now, there was another director whom I remember more fondly. Friends, Romans, countrymen. Hold it. How come you're doing it like that? Well, this speech has been done so many times, I thought we might try something new. Something to get people to pay attention. Well, it's a good idea. In fact, uh, I tried it myself a few years ago, but it uh, didn't work out quite the way I thought it would. Tell you what, um, let's try it this way. You see, listening with an open mind doesn't mean that you have to give up what you believe in. But if your mind is open, you just might hear an idea that you can use. It's made us into a nation of lazy listeners. We turn it on, and then we half ignore it, which is exactly what the hucksters would like us to do. But, if we really learn to listen, we would uncover some curious and revealing statements. Watch. And listen. Metzen is effective. And in a recent government study, Metzen was proven effective. Recent government study. How recent? One year? Ten? And what does he mean by government study? Which part of the government? Which government? Metzen was found to be significantly more effective than the three leading non-prescription pain remedies. Phrases like significantly more effective and the three leading non-prescription cold remedies leave enough loopholes to drive a herd of bison through. And yet most of us don't take the trouble to question what we see and hear on TV or radio. We just let it wash over us. Remember, you can't listen halfway. You've got to make up your mind, on or off. And if it's on, then pay attention and listen. <sighs> There's another listening skill I want to mention. One that's really tough to learn. Let me show you. If you can keep your eyes and mind from wandering, and your mouth closed, and if you can open your mind to forbidden subjects, and keep from jumping to conclusions, then you're ready to attack prejudice. Take our friend here. Uh, excuse me. Would, would you... Certainly. There? Uh, much better. Thanks. This man, who is about to interview this woman for a job, suffers from prejudice. And it affects his ability to hear what people are saying. Me? Prejudiced? Nonsense. Don't be naive. We all have prejudices about the way people look, their age, their sex. And when they speak, we often twist their words around to agree our prejudice. Now, for example, take this young woman here. This is a very nice young lady, whom I'm perfectly willing to hire as my secretary, if she can type well enough. Let's find out what she has to say, shall we? Hello, I'm inquiring about the opening you have for a controller. Controller? She's kidding. She can't possibly have enough experience. And I have a master's in business administration, and I've been in public accounting now for five years. A controller? A woman? You're in trouble. You know what your problem is? It's right here. Ow! This is your screen of prejudice for women. See how clogged up it is? It's a wonder you can hear anything at all. I'm going to give you some help. There. Now, maybe you'll be able to concentrate more on what she's saying instead of the fact that she's a woman. Now, let's try it again. Hello, I'm inquiring about the opening you have for a controller. Controller? 
a woman. That's novel. Since getting my master's degree in business administration, I've been in public accounting now for five years. Oh. Can you tell me a little bit more about your last job? The kind of responsibility you had? Well, he's doing a little better. But it's a constant process. Look. Oh, ow. This screen is starting to clog up already. The next time you find yourself not paying attention to someone, ask yourself if prejudice might not be the cause. You might be paying too much attention to the way someone looks, and not enough to what he says. Cut. That was marvelous. Very I have at times been a director myself, and it was during one such stint that I became painfully aware of one of the most irritating forms of bad listening. The person who jumps to conclusions. All right, let's head up for scene 47 now. Move those things out of the way. Oh, Jack. Jack, come here. I want to talk to you about this. Now, Jack, this is your big scene. Okay, I've got the lines now. What's the action? Well, when the scene opens, you're I'm in the saloon and I hear the stagecoach. No, right? well, you're in the telegraph office and the stagecoach comes around the corner. I come out of the office. No, you stand by the window and you watch it go by. <laughs> then I come out of the office and run down the street after it. No, then you turn to the telegrapher and you say your first line. Then you come out of the office. And draw my gun. What gun? Look. All I want you to do is, is run after the stagecoach until it stops, and then I find my Run after the stagecoach. Let's see you try. There it goes. Quick, after it. Go for it. Go, go. See what I mean? Jumping to conclusions is not only incredibly rude, but it can get you into some very difficult and very embarrassing situations. Teaching yourself to hear other people out is a listening skill that takes constant practice. It's a matter of patience, and a matter of common courtesy. I'll see it! Another hundred yards! Still there? Do I detect a telltale restlessness? A few unfocused eyes? Do you think you remember the skills of good listening that I've been illustrating with such graphic intensity? Hmm? Visual distraction. How to avoid it? Eye contact. Look at the person who's talking. Thinking speed. If you use it wisely, it won't lead you into the paths of distraction. Another thing I want to talk about is time. Are you... Ah, yes. Control of the mouth. If only more of us would learn to speak less and learn to observe. We're not going to discuss it any further. The closed mind, the sacred subject. Can a closed mind be opened? I run down the street. I run across the street. I run into the store. Be not like this poor unfortunate. Learn to listen to people before jumping to conclusions. Ow. And remember the screen of prejudice. Don't let it get clogged up. Now, I'm not going to pretend that I have told you everything there is to know about good listening. We have only touched upon a few salient points. It is a far, far deeper subject than this humble thespian can cover in so short a time. Good listening takes hard work and constant practice, but the rewards are great. A good listener knows the joy of sharing with others. A good listener has many friends. A good listener gains knowledge of the world. And so my ending is despair, unless I be relieved by prayer, which frees all thoughts. As you from crimes would pardon to be, let your indulgence set me free.